Welcome back to my channel. My name's Judy and this is Running So and So. She says, desperately looking at the camera and wondering why she's not got some figures on the top, but it doesn't matter. Now, I am coming to you today with a little bit of a tiny catch up because I'd had hope to film more Jubilee things than I actually did. I actually filmed me making the Jubilee pudding and I'm going to just pop it in here now. So I had last Sunday um, Hannah and Michael and Tristan and Rachel all came and I made the Jubilee pudding which was great fun. It was a question if you had to do a Swiss roll and then you had to make some jelly and then you had to make custard and then you had to put it all together and it made this most absolutely fantastic pudding. And then I made coronation chicken which was the dish that had been designed for the Queen's coronation back in 1953 which isn't actually yellow, it's meant to be pink because they didn't put curry powder in it. There's a little bit of curry powder in it but it's more cayenne pepper which is pinky. Then you put some tomato puree in it and then you put in red wine. But before then I'd been down to see my visit. But before then I'd been down to see my brother. And when I went down to Simon's on the way down you passed this lovely place called Burwash Manor. Put their Instagram handle there. And in Burwood Manor there's Backstitch, the fabric shop. Well, it would have been rude not to call in, wouldn't it? But I am just going to give you a little bit of a thumbs up for Burwash Manor. It is fantastic. If you watch the Ginger Thread Girl, I always get that wrong. I think she called Jenny, the Ginger Thread Girl. She's, she works there and she, she did a story on Instagram earlier today or late yesterday when she was actually in Backstitch and it is the most beautiful shop and it's run by a lovely lady whose name I really don't know but I just went in and had a little look. I actually wanted some plain blenders just in case I do ever get round to making that quilt and in order to make the quilt I actually bought a template, a big hexagon template. Now I have a small hexagon template, a small wooden hexagon template which would take me a few minutes to dig out but my brother made that for me back in 1978. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause and go and get it. My kitchen is starting to smell nice. I fancied cheese scones so they're in the oven so if I pause again it's to get the cheese scones. But in my sewing box that I got when I was lower than 10 is another little box that I bought when I went on a school trip. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. There's no, not even any point putting a link in the description box because I bought that on a school trip, we went on this boat, this cruise ship called the SS Uganda and we played concerts in each port and I nagged and nagged and nagged and dad finally let me go. So I bought this in Madeira, but in here, and this, I know it's in this box, in my old sewing box. Simon made that for me. Look, I was doing patchwork and I was drawing around a piece of cardboard and he shot off with this piece of cardboard and ten minutes later he came back with that for me. Isn't that lovely? You know, if I sent him a picture of this now he'd probably say, did I make that? Yes Simon you did. So I got these, like this. So I've got this one to work in with these together. But before I do any further let's put back something precious. Oh in here, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, there's a little wooden tea set that my parents bought me for Christmas in 1972. We all get sentimental about little things, don't we, as we get older. I digress. So I went to Backstitch and bought some blenders, just cream and purple. There's no point showing you, it's just a couple of fat quarters. Bought more double gauze. Blame Rowan for this. Is this one not just the most beautiful double gauze ever? I love coral. And coral, I think, as I've got older, it's a colour that's really suiting me. Um, I'm going to make a shirt dress. I'm not certain which pattern at the moment. I haven't quite decided. Um, who did I see? That was it. It was on the Tamsin dress pattern by By Hand London. It suggests that you can actually put embroidery on it. Now, because double gauze has got quite... it is thin. It is thin. It is quite sheer in places. I'm looking at you through this but it is substantial enough to actually take some embroidery. So I would love to do some embroidery on this particular dress. 
So that was Burwash Manor and I also picked up the most gorgeous little um, flower thing. I'll see if I can put a picture of it in just here. It was a, a planter and it's shaped like King Edward's crown. And I did actually get some flowers, put in one for Simon as a little gift to say thank you for having me. So from Burwash Manor I went down to Simon's and when I was at Simon's I went, I was going to do some sewing. So I took down my little sewing machine and I was going to make his bunting, which I did do. Here's Simon's bunting. I forgot to take my thread, didn't I? I took the sewing machine, I took the fabric, I took the scissors, I took the templates, I took everything except the red. So of course I had to go into Epping High Street. Now I knew that there was a fabric shop on Epping High Street. So I went in and I'm just going to insert this most beautiful bit of footage and the guy was absolutely lovely. There is a sewing shop near my brother's house and I've forgotten to bring my um, thread. So I thought I'll come down and get some thread. But it's got a little tiny Aladdin's cave in the Literally, back. it's tiny, tiny, tiny. But is it not just so beautiful? We don't have our shops like this anymore. Your high street shop with just a little bit of fabric. So I'm going to spin you around so you can have a little look. I'm drawn to the cupcakes. I'm thinking, what could we have? in school with, with cupcakes on. Look at that. That is just so beautiful. I don't need it, but it's just gorgeous. Pearls, cherries. Oh, this is lovely. Very traditional, fabric-y type thing. Ship's wheels. Spooky cats. Bees. It's just lovely. It's a proper, proper high street sewing shop. That's what I love about Epping High Street. It's just a proper high street. I'll show you when I go back out. It's got loads and loads and loads of um, flags and things out for the Jubilee. A little bit of Chinese. Some lace. Ginghams. Oh, I like that. Hold on a minute. What's this hiding at the back? That's very different. Oh, I like that. Oh, I do like that. Hold on a minute, I think this one put me out. I have to do some editing. I like that, hold on a minute. Oh, look at that. I think this has been in for a while. It's a bit grubby. But look at the sides there. But I rather like that. That is very different. It's come out, it's got knitting. Violin, some, oh look, Black Lindsay Tartan. Black Lindsay Tartan, Black Watch Tartan. Get myself in a little muddle here because my family, we are Lindsay's, but we can also wear Black Watch because Grandpa was in the Black Watch. I love that one there. Look at all these beautiful ones. Don't need ones. I'm loving it. It's like a proper high street zone shop, isn't it? <laughs> Because we don't we don't get high street shops anymore, do we? No, sadly not. And it's just, just gorgeous. I mean, look at this. Oh, red, white, and blue. I might need some of that. Okay. I have to have some of that. Cord. Yes, that would be absolutely lovely. It's how long have you had it in? It's got a bit grubby at the sides. I know it's the way we bought it. I'm afraid. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. The only way we could get that colour at the time. No, no. But the thing is, look at this. It's got like this little embroidery thing yeah. in it that I re it doesn't show up on the camera. No, that's what we thought. So because we thought most people don't go to the end anyway. No. How much? How much is it? I think it's about a thousand pounds a meter. This one. Oh no! <laughs> I thought I'm Ian Jones and son. Sorry? Am I in the wrong place? Am I in Jolin, son? <laughs> Hang on, let me find it for you. You've got so many lovely buttons and things. We try. Says the lady who comes from York and has got buttons for buttons down there, right? Buttons for buttons, yeah. Do you know what I've done? I've come down to stay with my brother and I have forgotten to bring... Right. ...thread. I've got my sewing machine, oh, got my bunting really? squares. Have I got any thread? No. <laughs> You haven't got any oh, sense. You have got the ribbon. I thought you Brand had the Bob. ribbon. Union Jack ribbon. Right, 4.99 a metre that. Could I have a, a couple of metres for yeah, that? Yeah, sure. As I know exactly what I would make with that. Look at these. Right, right, right. 
wondering what this is. Oh, it's a great big bow. I didn't see the stripy fabric in the back. Ah. It's probably hiding from Actually, me. Actually, I think we've, we've got stripy, but not much else because everything else is sold out. Oh, I, think I've, I think I've got, I think I've bought everything. Right. Oh, wait, hold up, Mr. Back from, boop. We are back from the uh, sewing shop. Thread on the machine, finally. All spread out. You can see that my Bunting Central has moved location. And I thought I'd bring down this little beauty. I can't believe. You know, 1979, I've got a... God. Anyway, thought you might like to know that while I'm threading sewing machines, my brother is also very handy. And he is outside in his garden. And he is threading too. He is threading these. And he's going to... He's putting one extra... What do you call it, Sam? A, just like a wire cable, isn't it? steel rigging he's put up to create a fence around his patio. It's just incredible. So, uh, I think we have to blame Dad for this. He was the one that was very handy. But when I sit on his patio, it's great. Because you actually think, look, he's sitting on a terrace. Because you've got that rigging just there. And he says, he's just putting the last little bit up just here. It's going to come down here. And he's uh, got to this point here. And he's actually doing them now. And this is the fabric we were talking about. He was going to charge me a thousand pounds a meter for it, but it is a bit of a seersucker gingham, and it's a really fine gingham, really fine check. But on it, can you see? There's a little tiny filigree. It's like filigree, like I don't know if you can see it very well. It's got little flowers on it. I'm coming right in, really slowly. Yes, there you are, it's picked it up now. Can you see, right in the centre? You should be able to see a beautiful, beautiful flower. Well, it's got those flowers all over it. And I saw it and I thought, I'm going to have to have that. I wasn't in the, I wasn't actually hoping to buy fabric. <coughs> so back from my brother's. And, hold on a minute, back from Simon's, and I came back to my Think Pink subscription box. And if you've not already seen it, is this not just beautiful? It's already been washed. It's an embroidered chambray, and I think it will make the most brilliant shirt dress. I'm not quite certain, again, which pattern to make with it. Some of these fabrics are so beautiful, I can't sort of instantly make something with it because I just want to think about what it is I want to make and what it is I want to wear. Sorry, Maggie's just not the tripod. But I'm a blue person and I love blue, so I like that one. I'm going to stack them all back up here to one side. You can't see it. I've got half my... I'll show you at the end of my kitchen there. Now, those are two of the fabrics. Three fabrics that I have acquired. No, Maggie, you can't have that. I've just had a cheese scone and Maggie wants to have the lick the bowl, but I might want another one in a minute. So Haley Jane time. Have we all seen the lovely new June So Haley Jane box? Well, I did. I was so kind. I did a live unboxing for Rachel because she's not got one this month. So I was having a chat with her. So for those of you that have seen the box before, you get, I've got the classic box. It's two and a half metres of a lovely fabric. Um, a magazine and some gifts and let's show you what is in this box that I absolutely love now stick and stitch have done some embroidery transfers now I'm going to use these and I'm probably going to do a little vlog on how I would use them I may even use them on the coral double gauze and you could create like a brooch effect on a garment and you could stitch in now there are some ideas of stitches to create this design. Now embroidery is something that I have done. It was the, one of the very first things that I did when I started sewing. So obviously my, my mother sort of nagged me to death to make certain I got the tension right. And I have actually done, I did study embroidery at school, 2A level. That's a very interesting fact about me that you probably didn't know, but I have an A level in embroidery and boy did I put some things through the sewing machine to create that. I digress. I have a fantastic book. I don't know if you can still get it, but my grandfather bought me it. And it's called Mary Thomas's Dictionary of Embroidery Stitches. And if you can get anything like that from your local library, please do. And I will have a look and see if there's any good guide 
to creating embroidery stitches on line and I will link them in the description box below. There is the magazine as usual. The magazine tells you what the theme is, a blooming beautiful June and it certainly is. And the first thing I've opened up for is Sarah who made the Davenport dress in that lovely viscose crepe from the February box, the one I used to make the Rivlin ruffle dress tester. You also get um, an idea of something to make from the lovely Tamlin that's sewn on the time. Where's she hiding? There she is. Tamlin's in a makeup bag this time. You get other things that people who have had the boxes in advance have made with the garment. And at the very, very end, and I do like this, she always gives you an idea of what's in the boxes in case you wish to upgrade or downgrade from month to month. And then here, you've got ideas that you can create. A bit like a planner. I love the magazine. I really do. And there's also a little notebook. Don't we all love a notebook? I don't know what I'll put in mine. My four fat quarters. I've been thinking today, because I was watching Tamlin earlier, what could I make with my fat quarters? And I really fancy doing something that I could take forward month to month with my fat quarters. You know, some kind of, I keep saying I want to quilt and I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do the other. But as I got, as I digressed, because something beeped, I had a problem with my eyes, so I lost a day there. I've got to do my gardening. I have to do everything. I am the chief cook and bottle washer of this establishment. And I try and do everything, and I try and be superwoman, and then I wonder why I get so tired. Hey-ho. Time for a slurp of tea. This is my favourite beak. It's got a hydrangea on it, look. Kath Gibson blessed. Yorkshire tea. Love a bit of Yorkshire tea and inside this box, as well as the thread, is the fabric. And now the fabric is out of the box, it's going one place and one place only, and that is into the wash. Now, I think that some people might have had this on a red background, but it is lovely. The first thing I thought when I saw this was a sagebrush top. But I'm going to think I'm not going to make any rash decisions on this particular make. So it can go up there on the pile. I've got two fabrics there to wash. Got my thread. That wants to go in my thread pot. I take the tissue paper out. And it goes to school. The box goes to recycling. Onto the floor. Tissue paper goes to school. Now then, I've got one more thing I want to show you this month in this sort of little fabric haul come semi plans make I was a bit naughty and I bought some fabric from Atelier Brunette for Jumpsuit June now Jumpsuit June is being run by the lovely ladies over at Sheffield Social it's an online challenge very similar to Anorak August it's a taking part challenge so there are posts going up on Instagram about people making their jumpsuits, how they're getting on, sharing their ideas, nothing more than that. No prizes, it's a taking part challenge. And I'm afraid at my point in life, I'm very much a taking part person. I'm, I ain't into competitions anymore, I'm really sorry. So let's have a little look in here. I have bought some fabric to make the new jumpsuit or combi short which means it's a tiny play suit by the Lutz pattern by my favorite literally are probably my favorite pattern company Maison Fauve and it is in English and French and to make it I have ordered some of the new collection it's the forget me not collection act two by Telly Burnett and it's this one I haven't started it should have done by now. I have got the matching thread and any buttons and things that I need in there as well. And one of a very naughty thing. I'll tell you, Brunette are doing their own tape measure. I'm afraid I had to have one of those. I mean, it's ridiculous. I don't need another tape measure, but I just had to have it. So it's never, ever too late to start a sewing challenge, no matter where you are in the month. I am going to do the Sew Fruity Challenge. I've got the Strawberry Fruity Fabric that I got in my Sew Haley Jane box last month. And I am going to make the True Bias Sutton Top. I'm just gonna pop it in there. 
and it's a top pattern I found on the fold line. It's not on the True Bias website anymore, but is available as a PDF from the fold line. And I'm not going to show you it because I'm just going to leave it as a surprise. I'm not planning on making too much this month. I've got other sewing jobs I've got to do. I've got some fantastic days out planned. I'm going to go out for afternoon tea with Laurie-Anne from Oregon and Ruan Tamlin and Rachel at in a lovely hotel in York next weekend and I'm entertaining Laurie-Anne and her husband Larry here on Friday so might do a little bit of vlogging I'm not quite certain the following week I'm going on a sewing day with my friend Melanie um, a little bit of a spur of the moment decision I saw this thing and I thought oh should we go Melanie so we're going to go so we're nipping off to join Izzy and some friends on a sewing day over in Sheffield, which will be great fun. Um, as I say, Melanie's new to sewing, so it's just literally the two of us going for a bit of a fun day out. So that brings me to the end of my little tiny fabric haul and a little chat. I am sewing at the moment. There are sewing things all over the place and I'm hoping to do a little vlog, a little mini Friday sews that I can record and get edited on Thursday and get uploaded and online on Friday when I get to school. And on the subject of getting to school at the moment, I'm being so good. I'm going on my bike. I'm super, super fit. I can't run properly at the moment because I have really hurt my right knee, but I can cycle. And with petrol approaching two pounds a litre in the UK, I'm afraid it's biking to school, biking to work. I'm very fortunate that I can cycle to my place of, uh, place of work. And I'm thinking in the winter of probably getting myself a little electric bike because the old endorphins get going when you cycle, don't they? And it makes you feel absolutely fantastic. And I'm arriving at school feeling like really whizzy. It's, I said to the boss, it's almost, I call him the boss. I, t I said to the head, you know, it's like, it's like I've been on a drug because I said, I'm so high. And he said, he knows exactly how I feel because he cycles too. I actually have to cycle through his village to get to school. So I'm really fortunate that I, I work in a cycling community um, of colleagues so we can all share our experiences and as for my bike I'm really lucky that my husband bought me a beautiful bike for the last birthday that I, he was alive for and every time I obviously use my bike I remember David. So on that note I'm going to say goodbye. Encontré a una niña tan bonita Y ella siempre se ha parecido a Yemayá Y por la calle con su ropa azul camina